Okay, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have with us today the former um, Ichiro Fujisaki, the former ambassador to the U uh, USA and a distinguished professor at Sophia University. Um, I'm your MC, um, Andy Sharp from Bloomberg. Um, today, as, as you know, uh, Mr. Abe recently went to the uh, United States, meeting Mr. Obama, gave a speech in Congress, and even drove a very nice uh, electric car. Um, so, Mr. Fujisaki today is going to talk about Abe's trip and the, and the um, issues surrounding the Japan-U.S. Um, relationship and alliance. And as you know, the alliance this was strengthened um, last month with the signing of the new defense uh, guidelines, um, which is very interesting now given the situation um, around Japan, the East China Sea, uh, and beyond. And also last night, we from the US, we had the news that um, there could be a potential block to the uh, TPP negotiations with the um, Congress vote on the uh, TPA fast track agreement. So perhaps this is something Mr. Fujisaki could touch on. And just a little bit more about uh, Fujisaki-san. He was um, ambassador to the US for about four and a half years, if I'm right, um, under five Japanese prime ministers. Probably makes hard life hard for an ambassador, I would guess. Um, he had some pretty tough things to deal with when he was an ambassador, notably the um, 311 uh, earthquake, uh, tsunami, and uh, nuclear disaster, and also the issues surrounding the um, Okinawa um, Fatema move with uh, under Mr. Hatoyama. So, why <laughs> why should I talk more? Please, Mr. F um, can we give a hand, please, to Mr. Fujisaki? So there'll be a, sh a short speech followed by um, questions and answers. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador and the members of uh, Foreign Correspondents uh, Club uh, of Japan. Uh, um, it's a great honor uh, to be here. Uh, two and a half years ago, I retired as an ambassador uh, in Washington. and. Uh, on that day, I said, now I can say anything. <laughs> My friend said, uh, but no one cares anymore. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. <laughs> and uh, one thing, I'm a little puzzled myself, is that uh, I was told by Chun San that uh, you should talk about Abe's visit, but I was not involved in his preparation, no, I didn't accompany him, so I really cannot uh, give you any account on Abe's visit. And uh, I'm not involved in diplomacy anymore. I'm uh, just a college professor. So what I'm going to say is uh, my uh, interpretation as uh, just a private uh, citizen. I think Abe-san's uh, visit uh, was a great success because it was so timely. Uh, three reasons. Uh, one, it was a 70 years uh, uh, anniversary since the end of the World War, and uh, everyone was watching what he will be saying. And I thought uh, uh, it was rather predictable because uh, he had uh, made a statement in Australian Congress, and also he made a uh, statement in London uh, uh, at the Asian African Conference. So it was uh, following that example. But there were new elements, too, I thought, uh, in his statement. One is that he used the word repentance uh, in the U.S. Congress, which I think was the first time that uh, U.S. Uh, I'm sorry, J Japanese uh, minister or prime minister has used. Uh, the second thing is that uh, Prime Minister uh, Abe said uh, in White House press interview that Abe cabinet upholds the Kono statement and has no intention to revise it. I think uh, from prime ministers, uh, this was the first time that he said it very clearly on that point. And uh, so I thought that was uh, uh, something to be noted. 
Uh, what was uh, very interesting was the uh, atmosphere and uh, uh, President Obama and the U.S. was so warmly welcoming him. Uh, as, as you say, uh, uh, Obama uh, said, Otagai no tameni, with and for each other. I think uh, he was uh, going out of his way to try to use Japanese and try to show uh, to the public that uh, uh, he's really welcoming the prime minister and try to show that Japan and U.S. is a good friend. Some uh, 30 years ago, when uh, Senator Mansfield, when he was ambassador here, said uh, Japan and U.S. relations is the most important relations bar none. And uh, Senator Inoue has repeated this and, uh, recently, but uh, when I heard that for the first time uh, some 20, 30 years ago, I said, uh, hey, this, are the, are the Americans really thinking it? Aren't they saying this to many countries, bar none? But uh, now, maybe this is coming really almost like uh, reality after so many decades. I would uh, sort of uh, group uh, this last 70 years into three groups. One is uh, up till 1970 or so, where Japan was catching up uh, with the uh, international community and the uh, uh, US was helping that. The second was from 70 to 90. And that was the, when Japan was growing, the bubble economy and everything, and uh, there was weariness in Japan, in the United States, I'm sorry, that, uh, hey, who won the war? Uh, that type of thinking. Third was uh, from 1990 to rather recently, when Japan was uh, said to be in last decades and uh, was uh, sort of lagging behind. And I thought maybe from here, 2015, we are entering the fourth era with this uh, Abe-san's visit. Maybe uh, it's a little too soon to uh, say that, but uh, was hoping that maybe this could be a, a one element as well. The second reason, so this 70 years element is the first reason. Second element is that uh, this is the time of uh, new rulemaking in Asia Pacific, especially and the world, TPP, guidelines, AIIB, law of the sea. Of course, law of the sea is not uh, new, but uh, the compliance to that. The third reason I thought it, it's timely is that uh, Abe came back to Washington, uh, came as a strong leader. Prime Minister, uh, because of his economics, w won elections. Uh, the uh, uh, lower house, upper house, and local elections mostly. And uh, he has both upper house and lower house, and he has several more years to go. Not too many leaders uh, uh, of the world has that very comfortable position. And uh, in Japan, as uh, just said by Mr. Sharp, this was not the case for so many years. So uh, it's uh, 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 very phenomenal that uh, abe -san came back. And the uh, second reason that uh, Abe came back as a strong leader is that uh, Japan-China relation is showing some improvement. If not, uh, it's, it was rather difficult. But uh, since last November, uh, the atmosphere is changing as well. So when I was watching television and seeing the uh, uh, president showing Lincoln Memorial uh, to the president, I really thought that, hey, new era is coming, maybe. It was very impressive. I sat in, uh, in the last 15 years, uh, seven uh, presidents, uh, uh, I'm sorry, prime ministers uh, meeting. Uh, uh, and uh, with the US president only two U.S. presidents, but uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bush and Mr. Obama. 
uh, outside was Mr. Mori, Mr. Koizumi, Mr. Fukuda, Mr. Aso, Mr. Hatoyama, Mr. Kan, Mr. Noda. I have a good memory. Uh, and uh, 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 during Koizumi uh, time, uh, we had, uh, there was a very comfortable uh, relations, but uh, I felt that, uh, I was not sitting in this one, but I felt that, uh, hey, uh, that kind of maybe uh, uh, good time is coming back. Now, I'll talk, I, I was not in the meeting, I was not in the preparation, so I'll just talk about my impression of the two or three things, uh, security and economic issues. Uh, one, on security issues, uh, we have uh, uh, agreed on new defense guideline, and uh, uh, Japanese uh, diet is going to uh, scrutinize the legislature. My impression, personal, is that uh, are we really going into the new world as uh, some of our leaders, U.S. and Japan, says, or some people are concerned, especially those people around Japan, inside but outside of Japan, in our vicinity, are concerned. I feel that... Uh, uh, it's maybe not as uh, new as some people are trying to paint. One is that, uh, as you can see from uh, defense guideline, defense-oriented posture itself is not changing. This is uh, the Japanese uh, defense policy is defense-oriented policy. Second reason, this is more maybe important, and it's the same thing maybe, is that uh, this is a fortification of Japan-US relations, and not Japan unitarily uh, going to fortify its military capability. No autonomous defense. So in that sense, I think uh, it is a continuation of the 70 years uh, uh, history, uh, the road that was laid down by Mr. Yoshida, uh, Mr. Kishi, Mr. Sato, and everyone followed that. Uh, in short, it's the same direction, but because the pace was so slow, he picked up and uh, started to uh, walk m more quickly than before. I think that's... Uh, how I look at the new uh, guidelines. So, however, there are, of course, uh, new points in the defense guidelines, and uh, one is uh, that attracted my attention is a new coordinating uh, mechanism. I do not know what it's going to be. We have to see it uh, through the legislature, but uh, uh, this attracted my eyes. Second is this island protection, and uh, uh, it's uh, very notable from uh, our situation in Senkaku and those areas. Some people say, what I do not understand very uh, well is that some people say that even if uh, President Obama uh, says that uh, Japan-U.S. Security Treaty covers all the areas under Jap Jap Japanese administration, including Senkaku, why in the world the U.S. would come to defend such a small island against China? But the same people will say, why do we have to fortify our defense posture through defense guidelines, fortify U.S.-Japan Relation, defense relations, because this is mystery to me because the very aim of guideline is to make it more certain that Americans can come to help us in time of need so that this situation will not happen. And uh, so I really don't think that is too logical. Now, talking about uh, Okinawa, I was involved in this issue f 
quite a long time, uh, since uh, 1996, uh, uh, nearly 20 years, but uh, not all the time. I, I think about the half of that time I was involved in that. Uh, first as a uh, political minister in the embassy in Washington, and then as a director general of North America in the foreign ministry, and then uh, I did not uh, touch that issue during my uh, deputy foreign minister and ambassador to Geneva time, but then I came back and uh, uh, involved in that uh, as ambassador to Washington. And uh, in 1996, uh, uh, Prime Minister raised this issue with uh, uh, President Clinton uh, in California, their California meeting, and uh, Americans uh, have uh, responded to that, and in 1996, April, Prime Minister Hashimoto signed an agreement with Ambassador Mondale here in Tokyo. This is a very complicated issue, difficult issue, but uh, we have to look back at the history of this issue. When Futenma was built, uh, there was not too much uh, houses or schools around it, but afterwards there were so many houses and schools built, so they thought that uh, uh, it's becoming dangerous. This is why Mr. Hashimoto raised this issue with President Clinton and um, signed with Ambassador Mondale. And afterwards, in 2003, uh, three, Secretary Rumsfeld, then the Defense Secretary, came to Okinawa and visited uh, Hutemma and said, this is the most dangerous base, U.S. base in the world because it's a helicopter and it's so surrounded by houses. And uh, it uh, sort of accelerated the uh, uh, process of uh, uh, studying how to uh, move this. And in 2004, as we all know, helicopter was crashed down, uh, accident. Uh, in Okinawa, uh, pretty near. Uh, it's on the ground of uh, uh, Okinawa International University. No one was injured, but uh, this was uh, 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 made people convinced that uh, uh, we have to really cope with it. In 2006, so roadmap was uh, agreed so uh, about this uh, relocation, and, uh, and nearly uh, 10,000 uh, Marines would uh, move out of uh, Okinawa Island. In short, there are five options regarding this issue, I think. One is uh, integration to other bases like Kadena or Hansen. It was studied, but uh, I think the uh, uh, conclusion was that this was not possible. Second, too much concentration to one a basis. Second was to take it outside of Okinawa. This was uh, studied and uh, by uh, Prime Minister Hashimoto as a cabinet, but it did not work out. Other prefectures uh, were not so uh, willing to take it. Third option was to close down Temma without having relocation site, but then People thought, is this the right timing when we have uh, North Koreans uh, flying missile tipped on over us or uh, Senkaku is happening? The fourth option is to just remain as it is and forget about Hashimoto Mondale or Hashimoto Clinton. But uh, as it is so dangerous uh, there, uh, that option is not uh, possible. So the fifth option was to move out. and. Uh, it's not uh, really uh, uh, such a wonderful thing to uh, landfill the beautiful uh, uh, coast, but that was the only thing that uh, was possible to come. So uh, if we don't uh, think about this process, people will say, why do we have to do this? But this was sought out by not only the present uh, LDP, Komato government, but DPJ government as well. And so that was the uh, idea that uh, we had to uh, um, 
Uh, now, on e economic issues, uh, TPP. A few weeks ago, Amari san was, uh, uh, Minister Amari was saying that uh, we are home there, 90% is already finished. From my experience as a government official, when we are 90% finished, we say 80% finished or 70% finished. We never say that we, when we are 90%, we are 90%. So I thought, hey, they, he must have gone up uh, higher than that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not involved in that, but uh, I thought so. And uh, everyone is now waiting for TPA. So yesterday's vote is uh, rather disappointing, and uh, we'll have to uh, uh, wait for U.S. Uh, Congress and U.S. Uh, White House and all others to work on this, uh, Congress and senators and try to come out with a positive, because this is a chance uh, to really have a new uh, rules. It's not only market access, it's rules, uh, uh, government procurement, environment, labor, and whole set of service investments, all sets of new rules. And we only say Asia Pacific, but that covers 38% of uh, world's GDP. U.S. is about 25% and Japan has 8%, so altogether, uh, I'm sorry, 23%, 8%, so it's altogether uh, uh, 38%, uh, nearly half of uh, U.S., uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, world's, uh, uh, so it's a huge importance. And for Japan, uh, very frankly, uh, I thought that's uh, our rescue boat because uh, uh, Republic of Korea was able to have uh, ROCUS, uh, Republic of Korea US uh, FTA, several years ago. And uh, I think our business was uh, rather concerned that uh, ROK has FTA and we don't have FTA with the uh, United States and it was so difficult to have it. So I think uh, TPA really, uh, uh, TPP came at the right moment uh, for Japan. And uh, I was uh, ambassador to WTO and uh, thought that uh, in any rulemaking, you have to be there. Meaning that uh, 20 years ago, Japan was one of the big four in WTO, in Ugai round. The big four was US, EU, Canada, Japan. When I went to there, in 2005, the big four, because it was an agriculture issue, it was US, EU, India, Brazil. India as an agricultural importing developing country, uh, Brazil as agriculture uh, exporting uh, developing country, and uh, EU, US, as you know. So uh, these were the big fours discussing agricultural, and we thought, that's not uh, how it should be. We are one of the uh, biggest uh, net, uh, we are the biggest net uh, importing country of agricultural products and uh, uh, world's uh, third uh, uh, trading uh, country and why should we not be in there? But once you're not in it, it's so difficult to get into that small group. So. Uh, TPP, uh, we were very lucky that we joined uh, two and a half years ago when Nabisan came in, and uh, it was really the last chance for us. So uh, it was, uh, uh, I think, uh, we really hope that this will start. And uh, I think the uh, Cabinet Office has uh, done uh, research uh, uh, of uh, merit and demerit of TPP and came to decision that. Uh, uh, have seen the figure that it's more merit to uh, Japan as well. Uh, talking about economy, AIIB, uh, I think uh, this is a very wise uh, uh, policy of China. Uh, I have a huge respect for uh, Chinese friends for coming up with this kind of idea. Because uh, you are trying to construct uh, airfield on the islands by your right hand but by your left hand, you're offering uh, huge money. 
and uh, that's uh, one of the best diplomacy I think uh, you can find. Uh, so I think that's the 3,000 years wisdom. Uh, I think Japanese position should be four elements, and I think it has been uh, done that way. One is that uh, see prudently the governance and also some of the uh, important rules such as uh, uh, environment or labor or those standards uh, which uh, we will uh, use for the infrastructure uh, uh, extending uh, aids and see how much merit is there for Japan or not. That's the first point. Second is uh, we have to have good coordination with the United States. That is the most important element of uh, ally or partner, not to leave the other side and jump into these new uh, initiative. I'm not talking about any particular country, but uh, I'm just uh, saying that we should not do it from Japanese side or we should not do it from American side. I, as a, uh, was a y very young official some 40 years ago, but I still remember that uh, what uh, Mr. Kissinger and uh, uh, President Nixon did, uh, as uh, we call Nixon shock and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we do not want to see anything like that coming from the United States, so we should not do that from the Japanese side. Third point is uh, we should not uh, be swayed by don't miss the bus psychology. Uh, some people are saying that we have to do it, uh, don't miss the bus, but uh, I think everyone's watching Japan very carefully, how Japan will react, in not only China, but other countries as well. And uh, this is the very important uh, occasion, how Japan will be seen. Are they really sort of uh, nervous and not missing the bus running around, or are we uh, taking more uh, uh, stable attitude? Uh, and uh, lastly, the fourth point is, uh, can we uh, use our means and uh, collaboration with uh, AID and others, and I think that's exactly what the uh, uh, finance ministry and others are doing now, uh, thinking about it. Uh, I think uh, U.S. Uh, and the there was talk of that uh, China is a sort of hidden agenda in U.S. Japan uh, talks, uh, Mr. Abe's visit. Uh, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. It's a more, as I said, more global issues. And of course, but China is an important element. It, the, I think what we're trying to do from Japan and US is a sort of rule making and rule honoring society. And uh, we would like China to uh, uh, come along with that as well. For example, law of the sea. The Philippines have uh, taken it to the law of the sea, uh, and uh, China has not uh, uh, appeared uh, there uh, in the talks. Uh, so I think uh, uh, this is uh, just regrettable. We do not, uh, Japan should not take uh, in any of those bilateral issues, but uh, just the uh, rules. And uh, US-China relations, as I see it, is uh, sort of a pendulum. On the negative side, there's a Chinese military buildup, uh, human rights uh, and uh, rules, and sometimes Taiwan. On the positive side, there's a big uh, business opportunity e economy. There's a UN cooperation in the United uh, Nations and control of North Korea. So. It's like a swinging from uh, negative to positive. If uh, someone is uh, ex exaggerating or t too much emphasis on economy, then people say, hey, there's a human rights, and if that's too much, then you would. So it's a sort of pendulum, and the uh, US uh, administration, Congress has gone from, Ill always has been moving. I think uh, for the next two years or so, uh, because the presidential election is there, and so it's rather, uh, 
U U.S. Uh, politicians will be uh, rather uh, cautious, uh, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. after that, uh, it may change as well. It's important for Japan, a country like Japan, not to be too much uh, uh, sort of affected uh, or uh, uh, thinking that, uh, hey, uh, U.S. and China is uh, discussing for n uh, nine hours, uh, are we going to be left behind, or uh, that kind of psychology. Some, I'm sorry, I'm maybe not speaking at the right place, but uh, some journalists uh, try to like to s sort of write those things, and uh, I am uh, rather skeptical. A country like Japan should uh, uh, act like a heavyweights and do not really uh, uh, get so irritated if uh, two others are uh, uh, talking for a long time or s spending too much time there or whatever. It's a little like a little girl psychology. I'm sorry, I'm a little boy or girl. I'm sorry, <laughs> I have to be right. Uh, uh, I think uh, Japan, U.S. Uh, 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 relations, uh, I think, uh, will develop from here on after 70 years. And uh, I've been always saying, this is for last 10 years, 15 years, that uh, always we should keep to three principles. Oh, guidelines, not a defense guideline, but uh, bilateral thinking. One is uh, no surprise. Sometimes uh, we want to do our diplomacy, North Korea or whatever. Uh, U.S. wants to do its own. But we have to let others know in advance good explanation not take between individuals there could be pleasant surprise like christmas gift or uh, birthday gifts uh, wow great but uh, that doesn't happen between countries never you have to be informed second no over politicization of the issue Some issues are political and important, like TPP or whatever. But if you try to focus too much on each talk or negotiation, and then the problem becomes bigger than itself, sometimes this is the uh, problem with the security talks. Because uh, on trade talks, it's you show that you demanded this or you whatever, and it's going on and on. However, on security talks, usually you this is done rather discreetly. And so Japanese government is often blamed that uh, we are f blindly following U.S. instructions. I don't think so at all, having uh, experienced uh, many uh, negotiations. But the uh, very fact that in security talks that we came to agreement uh, and uh, without too much difficulty is itself the deterrence to our third world uh, countries. So uh, we. Uh, uh, and we, I think if uh, time comes, we should reveal everything, but uh, in due course, uh, we do not do, and this uh, uh, invites the suspicion that uh, we are trying to follow too much of uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, policy. Third important is uh, no take for granted. After... I've been married for uh, nearly 40 years now. I think I'm doing a lot. My wife thinks she's doing everything. So, uh, well, uh, after even in, in after 40 years, that becomes so. Even after 70 years, of course, the uh, U.S. thinks that. Uh, U.S. is doing uh, so much for the defense of Japan, 
Japan thinks that uh, we are doing a lot for United States and that kind of uh, mentality uh, could bring to difficult uh, situation if we don't always try to think that uh, we have to honor the other side and the respect the other's efforts. So I've been always saying that uh, it's like an old couple. We ha always have to say, dear, I love you. And, uh, <laughs> and I think uh, this was done uh, this time with the Abe visit, so it was very good. Yesterday, I met a friend of mine, uh, and uh, he said, uh, Fujisaki, are you going to talk at uh, FCCJ? Uh, I uh, saw the uh, uh, advertisement on that and said, uh, uh, do I need to come? So I said, uh, you don't need to come. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, uh, can you give me a transcript? So I said, I don't have any transcript. So, and that's true. I just jotted points, but uh, I have no transcript in saying this uh, because this is what I've been thinking. And I'm sorry that uh, uh, I have, this is nothing new uh, news for you, but uh, I try to uh, sort of compose my ideas on that. And if uh, uh, there's anything that uh, you would like to uh, come, uh, maybe not here, but uh, uh, even afterwards, uh, uh, I'm at Sofia University, and uh, I can uh, give you my card. So uh, uh, you can, if you have any uh, uh, questions, not on what I have said, but in future, uh, please, uh, any of the correspondents, please do contact me, and I can, I cannot give you any information, but I can offer you some views. Uh, uh, thank you very much for this occasion. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, um, Mr. Fujisaki. Okay, go open the floor to some questions. Please, as always, your name and affiliation. Um, who's going first? Working, and also, may I remind you, uh, the first questions go to the working press. Linda Sieg from Reuters, thank you very much for your, your interesting comments. Uh, you spoke about uh, the importance of rulemaking, in particular with regard to TPP, uh, and also uh, mentioned AIIB, uh, led by China. I wonder how would you um, assess the setback to TPP uh, with the uh, reject, you know, the the uh, the blow in in uh, Congress in the U.S. and more generally, if if TPP does not go ahead. Uh, obviously, TPP and AIIB are very different things, but we have a China-led um, effort that seems to be moving ahead. We have a U.S. Uh, or a U.S.-Japan-led led effort uh, with TPP that seems to be stuck, uh, at least partly due to U.S. domestic politics. How would you assess that? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I uh, think that uh, this is not the end that the U.S. has uh, faced. I think uh, there's a I, I do not know the U.S. Congress process, but uh, uh, there could be a, another try on the motion for the, uh, to move this, and I hope that uh, administration and the congressional leaders would uh, uh, give another try. Uh, I think this is uh, important for Japan, but uh, for U.S. and also for the region as well. Uh, the uh, developing countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, and uh, Brunei, and those countries are coming along with us uh, in order to try to make the region. It's not trying to be exclusive, and I think uh, we sh this, uh, if uh, once this is done, I think we should be open to all those countries uh, who wants to uh, come in, but uh, uh, I think uh, this effort is uh, so important. Uh, I hope that uh, U.S. Uh, will try to get TPA. It's uh, very difficult uh, for other countries to uh, agree, uh, uh, to get agreement from their Congress if the uh, U.S. is uh, uh, not uh, getting TPA. So I hope uh, this will be, uh, there, there'll be another try. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm gonna ask a, a quick question myself, if that's okay. Um, <coughs> It's regarding the uh, situation in the South China Sea. Um, as you may have read, uh, 
there's been some reports that the US may be increasing their surveillance, their military sort of involvement in the area. And some, in recent uh, weeks and months, some US officials have called on Japan for assistance with this uh, kind of surveillance. Do you think Japan really should be getting involved or play some kind of role um, in the South China Sea? Uh, I think that's what really government should be saying, and I have no particular, I'm not in a position to answer, but uh, I think uh, the J Japanese uh, has been trying to offer some patrol ships to uh, Philippines, uh, which is, uh, could be used by uh, Philippines, and uh, also uh, this uh, airstrip uh, uh, landing, uh, airstrip construction, What's important is that uh, it should uh, not be made uh, uh, fait accompli, uh, fait accompli uh, because uh, uh, it was in 2010, ASEAN Regional Forum, that uh, Secretary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, spoke up for the first time. And then all the ASEAN countries started speaking. And I think that was a very noble uh, challenge and uh, uh, it was, of course China did not like it but uh, 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 these things should not be passed uh, without uh, uh, so I think uh, uh, I hope that the uh, China will uh, uh, come to love the sea uh, 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 discussion on this issue and uh, of course uh, uh, I don't know if what kind of uh, role Japan should uh, do it on here uh, I think uh, uh, if it's a military role, I think we'll be very careful in doing that. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, it's very necessary for us to uh, uh, keep showing the interest in that affair. I'm sorry that uh, I could not go further than that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you for taking my question. Kaori Ida with NHK Television. Um, I was wondering if you can share your thoughts on the U.S.-Japan relations beyond President Obama. Given your experience working with both President Bush and President Obama, how do you think the relation will change or evolve um, between the two countries under a potential President Hillary Clinton administration and a Republican administration? Uh, thank you very much, Ida. When I uh, went to Washington in 2008, it was during the election campaign between uh, uh, McCain and Obama. And there were, uh, the ambassadors were uh, invited and the journalists were there as well. And the journalists were interested in asking uh, ambassadors, uh, which country uh, do you uh, which uh, candidate does your country prefer? Uh, Japan, uh, you like uh, Republicans, uh, really, don't you? And there are people who write about that as well. I said, it's like a Christmas gift. You don't say anything till the day. You open the box. You would cry out, this is just what I wanted. I think everyone's doing that. Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice answer. Um, any more questions? Before we come to you, any more questions from the working press? Okay, there's one, one gentleman here, and then we'll come to you. Yes, please. Um, Siegfried Nidl, freelancer from Germany. About TPP and uh, AIBB more, once more. Um, I think that. Uh, a TPP in a way now is, is made and, and doesn't uh, allow China to be a member in the TPP. Um, and on the other side, Vietnam has the same business standards like China. So why exclude China? And on the other side, the US doesn't want to be a member in the AABB. And you said also uh, China, uh, Japan should be on the US side. Does this not mean, in the long, does it not mean dividing economically the world in two, in two, uh, 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 two, two parts or so? 
is not is it not a, a would it not be a wise policy to bring to try very strong to bring China into the TPP and uh, the, for the U.S. to go into IIPP? Uh, as you know very well, sir, uh, China joined the uh, TPP around, I'm sorry, uh, WTO around 2000, and that really gave a boost to Chinese export and uh, made uh, China today. So it's, I think it's, uh, uh, this TPP could be a, uh, the second boost as well. Uh, it's uh, first, uh, the country has to decide if uh, you want to join the negotiation. Japan, it was not so easy as well. So that's why we sort of uh, uh, pondered and uh, really uh, uh, it was an agonizing process if we, could, if we should join the TPP because of our agriculture. And uh, I think uh, China has not made uh, any uh, decision. If uh, China has said, please, uh, we would like to join, and uh, if the US said no, of course, uh, what you said uh, I think is true. And, uh, uh, but uh, I think uh, China has never expressed uh, uh, willingness, and the uh, US has never said no, or J US nor Japan. And I think uh, you're totally right that we should not really tr try to divide uh, uh, Asia Pacific and try to have as uh, more coordinated uh, uh, institution as possible. But uh, as for AIIB, as I said, uh, because of, uh, for example, governance or the uh, standards of uh, decision making, uh, Japanese has not been so sure. For example, uh, as you have read or you have maybe written about it as well, uh, their last uh, decision, uh, uh, director's meeting, uh, it was told that uh, they would not have uh, permanent representatives uh, stationed in Beijing. Uh, but, uh, in any of these uh, international organizations, permanent uh, representatives, uh, directors are there in Washington or in Manila and discussing almost every day uh, which uh, project to uh, adopt and all that. So I think uh, 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 we need to really scrutinize the process. And if uh, can uh, this be improved or not, uh, I think is an issue. So I think it's... I totally agree with you that there should not be a sort of division and uh, two different camps uh, antagonizing each other. We should try to make as uh, a holistic uh, structure as possible, but uh, it needs some uh, uh, process. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Hiroki Fujita. Um, Independent, writing for uh, Yuka Fuji Sapio Span. Uh, my question is regarding uh, uh, Governor Onaga's visit to U.S. Pardon? Governor Onaga of Okinawa. Uh, he's visiting U.S. at the end of this month, and in Okinawa, uh, it, means, it means that the uh, uh, opposition movement is going to be very active. For example, famous filmmaker uh, Miyazaki Hayao, Ghibli. Uh, and also a uh, uh, former diplomat turned uh, maybe author, uh, Masaru Sato. Uh, they're raising their voice. And they organized uh, over 100 million yen in a uh, couple of weeks. So uh, what kind of effect do you think uh, will happen uh, when the uh, governor of Okinawa uh, visited the U.S. Uh, to oppose to the uh, construction of uh, Henoko base? I have read uh, also that uh, Governor Onaga is uh, visiting uh, Washington, but I think the uh, U.S. government position, I think, is very clear, as uh, we have seen in the last uh, visit of Prime Minister Abe, that uh, 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 their uh, conclusion, uh, the Japanese government as well as U.S. government, was that the, this Henoko replacement is the only solution. And uh, I, I think the this is because they, as I said, I'm not involved now, but uh, I've been involved for some time, and they have really scrutinized all these possibilities and came really agonizingly that this is the only solution. If, if there were a better solution, of course, uh, or if the other prefectures or other uh, would uh, take it, uh, if it's strategically uh, uh, feasible, uh, of course, uh, that was possible, but it didn't happen that way. So it's, it's, it's the uh, uh, last remaining solution. Now, uh, how Mr. Onaga will be treated, 
In the United States, I don't know. Uh, because uh, I, when I was in Washington as a uh, political minister in the embassy or ambassador, uh, many uh, times uh, the governor has visited. And uh, it, it was sometimes uh, governor uh, on the uh, other camp, sometimes governor uh, who was uh, pushing this and uh, more neutral in many cases. It depends on the uh, way the governor, uh, uh, U.S. side uh, uh, who met and whatever was different from time to time. So I, uh, 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 it's uh, totally on the uh, American side to decide, and I, I don't think the Japanese side will ever say anything about that. I thank you very much. Okay, just a reminder, Governor Onaga will actually be here next Wednesday, so maybe you can ask him uh, directly. Can I come back and ask? Certainly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, any more questions from the press? Shy bunch today. Daniel. Uh, Daniel Lossing, uh, freelance. Uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, paid his respect at the Yaskuni Shrine in uh, December 2013 uh, by surprise, and that visit uh, spurred a protest from China and South Korea, but also from, from the United States. Um, when do you think it will become acceptable for a Japanese Prime Minister to visit uh, Yaskuni Shrine, and how likely do you think it, uh, uh, it is that Prime Minister Abe will pay his respect this year? Uh, that question, I really don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a more psychological issue. Uh, and uh, I think uh, 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 Prime, uh, I don't know. Uh, if you see uh, polls, uh, th it's divided as well. Some people think that uh, it was uh, uh, totally okay for prime ministers to go. Why uh, other countries have to uh, say uh, anything about it? Some people would say no. Uh, why do we have to irritate others uh, if uh, we knowing that uh, this would uh, be a problem? So uh, th uh, I think the Japanese public was not uh, monolithic on that. And uh, I think, uh, so if Japanese uh, was not monolithic, I think, of course, other countries, uh, they are divided uh, as well. And uh, when uh, will that be accepted? I don't know. Uh, but uh, during Koizumi period, uh, uh, he was going every year. And uh, uh, it was never accepted, but there was not a big uh, uh, sort of pushback. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, that kind of situation will come or not. Uh, I think uh, at this moment, uh, uh, if uh, uh, this is still a very delicate issue and uh, could be so for years. Thank you. That, that Abbasan will go? Uh, if I would, may I repeat my second part of my question? Uh, uh, okay. How likely Abbasan will go? Please ask him. Please Im invite uh, you After Onaga, you can invite Abe. Believe me, we are trying to get him. Okay, um, any questions from any of our members? Another one? Okay. I read in an article about um, Mr. Abe's speech in Washington, that comparing it with a, a speech of, from you some years ago in Washington on the same subject, uh, mm -hmm. a, a speech from, from you on, on the same subject. And the, the article said you clearly apologized what Mr. Abe didn't do. And so how do you see, uh, how do you, See, I miss the Abe's uh, speech and if it's kind of apologizing, not apologizing. Uh, you mean me, sir? Yeah. Personally, uh, I think you're talking about uh, the Bataan death march uh, uh, because uh, I was ambassador uh, when uh, Bataan death march, uh, PO, uh, prisoners of war and their family had the gathering for 50 years. And the last 
was, I think, in 2009. And uh, I was uh, 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 in May 2009, I was uh, invited to that. And uh, uh, at that time, because uh, time co uh, of a constraint, I didn't have time to discuss with Tokyo. So I, uh, on my own discretion, I went to there. And uh, I uh, made apology on behalf of Japanese government uh, to uh, death march in line with the Murayama uh, statement. And uh, uh, this was the first time this uh, prisoners of war heard from Japanese government uh, uh, that uh, the uh, apology. So uh, uh, it was uh, accepted. And uh, afterwards, uh, the uh, Japanese uh, foreign minister uh, repeated that. So uh, uh, this was uh, really the uh, first occasion they heard it. So it's a little different, maybe, because uh, in uh, other cases, uh, uh, it has been repeated, but I do not know. I, I'm not saying that it's not necessary or it's necessary. It's uh, uh, something that is being now discussed by uh, uh, Wiseman Group, and then uh, Prime Minister will be pondering on that himself. Uh, how should uh, he address it? So I would not like to, uh, want to prejudge what he's going to say. I don't know, but the, what I'm saying is the case is a little different. Thank you very much. I'm just going to ask you another question, if you don't mind, about the security uh, legislation that the cabinet is likely to uh, approve in the next few days. Um, do you think Mr. Abe is right to try to push this through quickly in this current dying session, or should he wait and should we have a longer debate among the public about the very nature of these bills and the, um, just the, the, you know, the fundamentals of the bills and also of going forward the constitution? Uh, I know that there are uh, criticisms that uh, he made a statement at uh, U.S. Uh, Congress first and uh, trying to uh, push this to Japanese diet. However, if we uh, look at uh, uh, the defense guideline, it clearly says that this is not a commitment and it's sort of a goal and how this will be realized is dependent on the legislature. So not everything may not uh, may be realized. And uh, that's the relations between defense guideline and legislature. As for the uh, process, uh, how should we go about it? I think uh, uh, what it I feel is uh, good is that uh, there's uh, two government parties now, uh, LDP and Komeito, and uh, they discuss among themselves, uh, and then uh, the process, uh, according to the newspapers I'm reading, is pretty sort of coming out, and uh, how they came and whatever, and it uh, has a transparency more than uh, one if one party was uh, doing it. So uh, I think uh, I uh, uh, there were some of the uh, Comato's remarks which was uh, uh, taken in, and uh, I think that gave uh, some assurance to people as well. So. Uh, I think uh, all in all, it's not that uh, everything is sort of mystified and nothing is so clear. The uh, guideline is there, the cabinet decision last is year is there, and uh, uh, Cometo's and Jiminto's agreement is there out, and there will be cabinet decisions. So if you look at uh, carefully, we all know uh, what has been uh, uh, agreed upon. and. Uh, uh, also, as I said, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, uh, first uh, uh, recommendation from a Wiseman group last year, uh, Ambassador Yanai's group, it was a rather holistic, uh, uh, ambitious goal. But uh, then cabinet decision boiled it down to rather minimalistic approach. And uh, because of, I think, uh, the relations with Komeito maybe and uh, all that. So it's not as new, totally new as uh, uh, some people would like to uh, capture. And uh, I think it's a uh, 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 good idea if uh, people can uh, 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 make uh, this agreement as soon as possible. Because if we wait one more year, if something becomes more clearer to people, I don't know. I think uh, 
uh, this uh, several months is, uh, if we have two or three months, that's enough for people to learn about this uh, process as well. And uh, this was not possible for the last several years because uh, the government party didn't have two, two houses. Now it's possible because they have two houses. And I think uh, when uh, we have uh, that kind of situation, something uh, important could be outlined as well. Because uh, if you look back at history, uh, important decisions like had some, of course, uh, challenges. Uh, like Abe-san said in uh, Congress, uh, his uh, grandpa's uh, decision of uh, revising security treaty had uh, very big uh, uh, protests, but uh, then uh, it lasted, it's lasting for 55 years, and now everyone's uh, sort of uh, uh, praising this. Uh, so I think uh, what we have to have is, uh, of course we have to have the as many people's understanding, but uh, foresight if uh, that kind of uh, structure could be useful for years to come. I thank you very much. Okay, um, maybe we have time for one final question. Uh, Joel. Uh, hello, Joël Lejean from the French TV and uh, radio, um, RTL and TV5. Uh, my question is about psychology of the society here. I mean, 70 years after uh, World War II, we see when we interview Japanese society that for many of them, maybe because it was the soldiers of the emperor, the people seem not to recognize that there were a lot of beheading, bayoneting, killing, and and murdering confront women and so on. Do you think that, contrary to what you did in 2009 on the uh, Baton March, uh, which, by the way, followed a book written in 2002 by Hampton Sides, which talk about this uh, Baton issue very accurately, and I think got a price about it. Do you think that the Japanese society itself is not capable to look at the situation that happened 70 years ago? And is that why Mr. Abe feel he's so, let's say, um, uh, easy? to go on avoiding apologizing to the Chinese or the Koreans as he didn't do in, in the Congress? I uh, think uh, that uh, uh, if uh, the present uh, day uh, knowledge of the recent history is uh, sufficient in Japan, I don't think so. And I think that's dangerous. Because uh, students learn history up until 18th century or 19th century for college exam and entrance exam, and then uh, do, don't learn too much of history. Uh, it's uh, uh, much of uh, uh, recent history is left to uh, someone like uh, Shibari Otaro, or uh, 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 and uh, I think that's uh, not how it should be. So I think uh, when you, and of course it's controversial uh, if we try to justify too much of uh, the uh, uh, what we have done uh, before the war, I think there'll be a uh, uh, process coming from around and if we try to uh, uh, blame ourselves too much then the, uh, there are people who comes up. So it's very delicate, but I think that's really what we should do in universities. Uh, we have uh, freedom of uh, speech, freedom of academy, so I am t telling students, try to learn this uh, past 100 years history. And uh, I can do it in 20 minutes. Even 30 minutes, what we did to Korea, what we did to China, what we did to others. And uh, because we were latecomers compared to France, uh, uh, who had Indochina and uh, Holland, had whatever. So we, we did that, but in 1931, 32, 37, whatever, we did this, we did this and that. I think we can do it very quickly. And uh, I was just doing that only 30 minutes, uh, uh, one hour ago with this uh, girl from Tokyo University. And uh, uh, so I think uh, it's very important that Japanese students learn about uh, more about uh, the recent history and uh, try not to uh, think that uh, uh, to justify everything that has happened uh, before. I think uh, uh, we should not be maybe 
over apologetic, but uh, there are things that uh, we have to be very, uh, that Japan had to be responsible, and uh, we should never forget about it. I agree. Est-ce que c'est suffit, monsieur? Merci beaucoup. Okay, well, thank you very much um, for, your, for your very candid comments today. And, um, oh yes, we have a, a year's complimentary membership to the club, so you can come and discuss the matters over a more informal drink. So anyway, can you give me a round of applause, thank, please? Thank, thank you. you very much for having me, thank you. As I said, it's not a lip service. So if you have any questions, uh, not regarding these issues, but in the future, uh, I have no information, but I'm always ready to discuss with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>